Good afternoon, it's John Jones with Market Advantage here to unbelievably uh, complete week five with you. Week five of our uh, five part series. Uh, today we're gonna talk specifically about uh, an email campaign and, and really as it pertains to business to business efforts. Uh, a lot of what we've looked at up to now has been uh, some, some of the day to day property flyers, postcards, those kind of things that we run into in our real estate business. Uh, we spent a little bit of time on prospecting, a uh, good overview on the e-newsletter and those kind of things. But today we're really just going to sort of turn our guns and, and face uh, trying to generate repeat and referral business from other business sources. This can be the you know other other referral sources that you're using now, other professionals as they relate to your real estate business, and it can be your day-to-day -day interactions, the uh, the milkman, the uh, dry cleaner operator that you visit, uh, the, the people who uh, clean your kids' teeth. So we're going to step a little bit outside of our normal thinking on that kind of stuff and, and just kind of see if we can come up with some different ideas on how to generate business. Uh, market's tough still, and uh, agents are looking for different ways to find uh, different lead sources and, and really help each other out. So I'm going to close my outlook there so that doesn't keep binging in on us. And we'll go ahead and get started. It looks like uh, just about everybody's here, so everybody's on time. I'll get started on time. I appreciate that. Uh, again, a little bit of housekeeping is just uh, remember, that if you've been with me for all five weeks, you know already that uh, you can basically type in questions in the question log, and uh, we'll have a little question and answer session at the end, and, and hopefully I'm able to get those answered for you. Um, and I'll read those back, obviously, so that everybody can benefit from the question as it's posed. Uh, but for the most part, I will hold those questions until the end, as opposed to just having the, uh, the phone lines open and we don't have to deal with background noise. And if people get a phone call or they need to step out for a minute, it doesn't distract anybody. So really, that's it for my housekeeping. We'll go ahead and get started. Today, again, is kind of a fun one, I think, because it lets us sort of look at different avenues that we think about but probably don't implement or have a system to implement. So hopefully this will give you a better idea of how to use market advantage to help you with some sort of alternative referral sources, or at least a different way to go about uh, utilizing those and touching those those other uh, lead sources. Uh, you'll notice that I've logged in and I have landed on my today screen. Uh, when you log in, it's going to look almost exactly the same, but remember, you'll have the uh, the correct lifestyles logo with the square version of real living, and I mean the sort of generic. Uh, test account, but otherwise everything else we're going to look at is exactly the same. Uh, a little reminder, as always, make sure your profile is correct. I know I beat the dead horse on this one, but uh, just remember that anything that's on this page is going to go out on the marketing materials as you create them, or even as they're sent out over time to people. If you put them in a campaign, uh, or you've got them set on your website for people to click on, say, a, a newsletter, those kind of things then uh, they're going to view whatever's in your profile at the time. So you want to make sure it's accurate and make sure that it's correct. And uh, again, uh, not a big deal there. Just make sure that it's uh, it's correct. You will note one change. I'm not sure this affects lifestyles yet or not, but uh, the profile is now being populated from the business center. So if there is a challenge, if there's a, if there's a, a change to be made in, say, your name is spelled wrong or the address for the office is incorrect, you can't change that yourself now. That's coming. It's being pulled over directly from what you do change in the business center. So it really just helps uh, life size styles agent stay consistent in what they're trying to do. Uh, so, but now the business center wins. So you want to make sure that whatever changes you make are correct within the business center. Of course, there are still uh, some fields that you are going to want to change: the call to action field and the social media field. And of course, you'll still upload your own uh, profile image as well. So if you did make a change to any of these editable fields, remember to click Save Profile, and you can uh, then know with confidence that anything you create from that point on will go out for collecting that information. Okay, so let's uh, let's turn to the business at hand, and we're, we're, we're talking about building a business-to-business -business email campaign. And this could be almost anything you want. And there's nothing wrong with sending your standard marketing material, your standard efforts out, to the businesses that you do business with. Um, certainly, you know, your mortgage folks, uh, certainly other lead sources that you might have, whether it's attorneys, whether it's uh, a 
accountants, whether it's um, you know those professional kind of day-to-day -day interactions that you've got, those people can probably benefit from your normal marketing materials. And by that I mean, if you get a new listing, why not email it to them, right? It doesn't it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, let, let's get an email out to folks. Let them know you got a new listing. They may they may know somebody that fits that listing, right? If they don't want to get that stuff from you, you know that uh, they can unsubscribe from receiving those, and, and the system takes care of that for you. So don't be afraid to put people on your lists. Now, that being said, uh, you know, again, from following me on these five weeks, that I'm a big proponent of sending the right targeted messages to the right groups of folks. So, and, and Market Advantage helps you do that. So, again, there's a lot of opportunity just to send your regular marketing things. So I've got an open house this Friday. You know what? Everybody should probably know about that. I'm going to send that out to everybody. But what if you want to be specific? And you want to uh, start generating referrals from, and let's just use your dry cleaner as an example. Okay? Let's assume that you like your dry cleaner, you like the business that they do, and you have, you know, you have a decent relationship. You may see them once a week, and it's, hi, Sam, how you doing, Joe, kind of thing. Why not have the conversation? You know what, Joe? I know that, you know, obviously you stay in business because you do a good job. You take care of people's clothing properly. You give them uh, good value, and they come back to you, right? But you're still going to lose a certain percentage of people just from attrition, from people moving away. Uh, their, their job relocates them. Uh, you're going to want to build that customer base. So he lives on referrals just like you do, right? And he understands that coming from the business point of view on your side. And I, I don't mean to be um, remedial about this. I'm just trying to have sort of a reminder conversation that, that we should think about everybody we interact with as a potential lead source for us. And hopefully you can be a lead source for them as well without being, you know, your job is not to advertise somebody else's business, right? It's really to advertise yours. But if you can get somebody to do a little advertising for you and you can do a little bit uh, as a reciprocal for them, uh, then hopefully your business will grow. So if that is an avenue you want to experiment with, if it is something you want to try, there's a lot of pieces that are in market advantage that, that, that can fit that bill. And really you're looking at a couple of different things. You may want to send things directly just for that. And again, I'm going to use the small business owner of the dry cleaner as our example today. You may have a better example in your mind, but for today I'm just going to say the dry cleaner you're going to have pieces that you'll want to market directly to the dry cleaner. It's only for them to see. And then you're going to have pieces that maybe you and the dry cleaner co-brand on, right? Maybe you're going to send out that just listed postcard, but you're going to include a coupon for dry cleaning, right? So that there's value there for both of you when that goes out. And I know that there may be, depending on where you are and what state regulations you fall under, there may be some uh, some things that you want to check on and be sure that, that you're kosher before you're sending those things out. But uh, certainly not something that can't be done. So let's look at a couple of those scenarios. And, and for today, I just want to talk about email uh, because that was the subject of, of today. So let's look at e-greetings and we'll look at just email. Anything that's in this category, obviously, the, the way that the templates are designed is just for email. They're e-greetings. We want to go to real estate. I'm going to click on that. And we're going to drill down even farther to the referral category. And you'll see we've got a nice series of five cards that are available here. And I'm going to pull one of these into the editor just so we can see what they look like. But I'm going to pull this second one. I appreciate introductions. Pull that into the editor and we'll get a good look at that. And you'll see, uh, you know, you may have some different ideas about what we do with this, but I'm going to create a, a quick referral piece that we can save and send as a one-off or save and make as part of the campaign that we drop any new business lead into so that they automatically get those. So again, the, the theme and the branding is already done on this. The theme is already set here, uh, you know, about if you know it of anyone that, that might need my services, I appreciate introductions. The branding, your branding, is already on the piece as well. And again, remember, you can edit these pieces as you come across them. Then you're going to want to put your custom greeting here. And depending on who this is, you know, you're going to change your messages. So, um, you know, I'm going to write something probably pretty vanilla here, but my business depends on referrals just like yours. Do a better job typing. So let's see. 
I understand this piece has, has a lot of what I call eye roll factor in it when I'm, when I'm showing you this. Um, but, but again, I, I just want you to get ideas from this and, and generate it. So if this isn't exactly something that you want to do, uh, come up with something on your own that you can use this particular piece for. I'm going to pick a different font there. Probably something. Try one more, if you're sure, maybe. So again, it's a simple message. I didn't have to come up with a theme here. I just had to come up with my own personal message. My business depends on referrals just like yours. And so let's see if we can work together. Again, they know who you are. Your dry cleaner sees you. You know, you drop off this card. You email this card to them, and, and they see that. I'm going to go ahead and save this because we're going to need this later. I'm going to call this one Referral um, Dry Cleaner. So I'm going to call it DC, Referral DC, save. So it's going to create that piece, it's going to save it for us, and it'll be, be there in, in this email format. So I could go ahead right now and go ahead and send this to my dry cleaner. Come on. So the piece is ready to go. I could very easily just say email and go ahead and send this to them, right? I fill this out and let it go. When they get it, by the way, it looks exactly like what we created in the previous um, remember when you do email these pieces, you have the ability to write an entire text message above it in this space up here, and that space will grow, obviously, if you need it to. But when this piece is emailed, the recipient opens it, and this is exactly what they see. They get this entire email. So it's a nice way, and this is a very simplistic uh, message, I understand that, but it's a nice way to be able to communicate with people and send them out something that is hopefully of value to them. Now. Is your dry cleaner going to jump up and down the minute that they get this email and say, oh, my business is saved, thank goodness I'm going to do some co-branding with John, John Jones now? Like, absolutely not, right? But just like any other kind of email drip marketing, if they're, if they're you know, open to the idea at all, this is going to start to work on them over time. And what you really want this to do is just be a, uh, an idea that pops up in their head once a week, once a month, whatever you decide the best delivery schedule is for that, so that they see that and you stay top of mind with them, so that when their new customer walks through the door from New Jersey and says, yeah, I'm out here, you know, my company's relocating us in, in a month, and, and I'm just out here renting right now, and uh, your dry cleaner hopefully then has the impetus to say, well, do you need a realtor? Have you got that straightened out yet? That kind of thing. So, and again, I know this is this is a grandiose plan of mine, but it's it's those kind of ideas that I think can can help you, uh, especially if you put them into play in a in an automated fashion. So let's create a couple more pieces. I just want to have them so that we can create a, a custom campaign out of this as well. So I'm going to go back to the referrals, and we're just going to save a couple more, and um, I'm going to pull this one into the editor too. And just want to save the messaging really quick on it. And once I've got those three pieces saved, we're going to create a campaign so that it doesn't become this chore that we're going through right now to create these. And I'm just going to say greeting here. And I know that's not the actual message. I'm just typing that there to save this piece. Okay. So we're going to call this one referral DC2. I'm going to save this one. And actually, I think that's enough for an example. I don't want to waste too much time on creating the pieces. But now I'm going to show you what to do once we've got our pieces built. And we can now put these in an automated fashion so that when we get a new lead, we can just put them into this campaign and let them, uh, let them go from there. So as you can see, I can even add this to a campaign uh, that's existing now. But we're going to start from scratch, OK? So we created these two referral pieces. You'll probably create more than that. Let's say you create five or six. They would all be saved here, right, under your saved pieces, under e-greetings, and they're named. So we remember it was referral DC and referral DC2. We're just going to do two pieces. But again, remember, you can make as many as you want. Now I'm going to come out to the outside border. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about creating custom campaigns. This is a great example of, of why you, you might want to create a custom campaign. So let's do that. So I'm going to click on Build a New Campaign. And rather than choose from one of these stock ones that are already built, we're going to build our own campaign. And I just click on Customize and Advanced Setup. 
and we'll start on our own. So the first thing we want to do is go find the saved pieces. And I click on Save Pieces, then we'll go to eGreetings again. And here's all of our saved pieces. And we'll make this our first one. We'll click on Referral DC, Add to the Campaign. That's our first piece now. We'll grab that second piece, add it to the campaign, and that's our second piece. And then again, if we had more, we would simply go, in fact, let's, I know this isn't related, but we're going to pretend that it is. We take this birthday card, I'm going to add this to the campaign as well. Let's pretend that we have three here that are just uh, email referral pieces. And we're going to move on to the next step. The next step, we're going to name this campaign. And let's call this uh, Small Business Referral. And we want it to be, we can choose now if we want it to be an interval campaign or a date campaign. Um, interval means I'm going to decide how many days between each piece there are between the sends. And I recommend that because I want to keep dropping new contacts and new leads into this campaign. So I don't want these to be tied to a specific date necessarily. I want them to just go out on a set schedule so that I know if I put uh, Bill Smith in today, seven days from now, he's going to get the first piece. Two weeks after that, Bill Smith is going to get the second piece and those kind of things. So that's why I want to choose interval campaign. If I was creating something that was date specific, maybe it's a holiday campaign, maybe it has to do with offers that I'm putting on there, uh, you know, send me send me some send me uh, five referrals and I'll uh, y you know do something back you know or there's a coupon or those kind of things. And again, I know great legal areas there. I, 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 you guys have to be careful about that stuff. But um, that's when you might want a date campaign. And then of course there's birthday campaigns and purchase anniversary campaigns, but those don't really pertain to what we're doing today. So I'm going to choose interval. And then because we are emailing these, I want to write a great email subject line. So that when these people receive this piece from me, they're going to want to open it, right? So um, maybe maybe something that will get them to look at the card. I'm just going to write open for business, right? And then that's my email subject line. I want this to go out the next day after I add somebody. So I'm going to leave that at one day after a contact is added. And that was our first referral piece. Second piece, I'm going to write the, the email subject line again. And, um, you know, thanks for, let's just say thanks for helping. I don't know if that's a good one or not, but we're going to send that one 14 days after that first piece went out. And then again, we're going to pretend this one is a, a third referral piece that we made. And, um, you know, let's just say I'm writing, okay, it's working great. All right, and then we'll keep it at a two-week interval. So I've got my three pieces in my campaign. I've given them all email subject lines. I've given them all a delivery date, and I'm going to save that. I gave it a name. We're going to go to the next step. Now the next step is to tell this campaign who, who to send this campaign to. Let me see if I'm in this list. So I'm looking for my name here. I think I went through this exercise yesterday. I'm not in here. So what I do not want to do is is add this. Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna we'll, we'll be careful. So Jennifer Jacobs. I'm, for an example, I want Jennifer Jacobs to receive this campaign. So I will add her. The system looked. This is an email campaign. The system looked to make sure that I had the pertinent information for her, which in this case is an email address. I do. So I'm gonna add her to the campaign. It's gonna move her over. Now, if I do nothing else, tomorrow, Jennifer Jacobs is getting that first referral card from me. Two weeks later, she's getting the second one. Two weeks after that, she's getting the third. So I'm going to click Save and Activate, and that's actually going to happen now. So here's our campaign, Small Business Referral. It's right here in the middle, and that'll stay there now. So it's it's built with no activities, but it does have three email components to it, no direct mail components. And we've added one contact to it, which it's just going to get her first piece tomorrow, right? So that will run now its course, in this case three pieces, until the end, and in, in, until I do something different with it. Now let's say I, you know, stop by 
the, oh, I don't know, you know, I drop my kids off the orthodontist today and I pick up one of the orthodontist card and I add them to my contacts. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got a new lead now that I'm going to put in and I've gone to contact manager. I'm going to add a new contact and I'm just going to read off the business card and we're going to add um, Sarah Brown. She's the orthodontist and maybe she's the company is, you know, great teeth. Nothing more exciting than watching somebody input data, is there? So I'm not just going to put in, I'm going to put an email just really quick. I'm just going to put mine in just for the sake of speed here. And, and also to keep me from accidentally sending it to anybody. So you would fill out as much information as you can about Sarah, right? Not just this basic information, but remember, if you know it, personal information, secondary contact, groups, and those kind of things. What we do want to do is maybe put Sarah in her own group, right? So when we get to that page, let's click on groups and let's see if we've got, we don't have a group for small business. So I'm going to add a new group. I'm going to call this small business leads. Like, let's just do biz leads. Small biz leads. So I've just created a new group. I've added that. And we're going to put Sarah right into that group. She's been associated with that now. And I'm going to save her contact. So Sarah Brown, my orthodontist, my kids orthodontist, has just been added as a new contact. I'm going to go ahead right now, while I've just finished putting in her record, and I'm going to add her to that small business campaign right here. Small business referral, check the button, click submit. It checked for her email address. I approve adding her to that campaign. And now there are two contacts receiving that. And then tomorrow, if I get a new lead, I will put it in that new lead, and they'll be on that same schedule. So Sarah and our original contact are getting that first piece tomorrow, right? Because it's set to deliver the first piece the, the first day after I enter that contact. If I enter a new lead or two or three tomorrow, they will get that first piece the next day after that. So all these people will be getting this, this campaign that I've built on the schedule that I've designed, and they'll benefit from the entire campaign simply because I took the, turn, the time when I added them as a contact to come across the screen and say add to campaign and put them in a campaign. So it can be that easy. There's a little bit of pain, as you saw. You know, it took me a few, couple, three minutes to create those couple um, of cards, which obviously are not ready to be sent out, right? So truth be told, you might spend 10 minutes apiece really putting some good thought into creating these campaign pieces, reflecting exactly the messaging that you want. And by the way, you can be very specific about the messaging. You can say, hey, it's John Jones. I'm the, I'm the, the Bonnie Bray Realtor. I specialize in homes over 500,000. I've successfully you know, married uh, 200, 200 homeowners with their properties since 1990. That kind of thing. So, so that your dry cleaner, in our example, knows exactly what you do, exactly where you do it, and what your business is, and the business that you want. So that they're not sending you the, the, the $79,000 condos that you don't deal with. That's not your market, right? So be very specific about the pieces that you want to send out uh, and the messaging there. So that's, that's a really um, high-level look at an idea of how you might uh, do some business to business email referring. I don't think you should be out blanketing all the businesses you do business with, you know, but if you're friendly with these folks and they know who you are, gosh, gosh, I think you ought to, you know, I think you ought to talk to them about it and say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to email you something. There's no pressure on that, but, but if, if, if we can help each other out a little bit, times are tough. This would be great for, for me. I know that and hopefully I can help you as well. So, that's one idea of, of marketing directly to your small businesses. And again, I'm sure you've got a lot of uh, ideas as well on how you might better utilize that, but that's my thought on that. Um, my second thought about how to go about using the system for this kind of thing is, as I talked about before, kind of doing a co-branded piece. So maybe you want to put together an offer where um, you know, you're sending out your normal offer for a, a, a CMA 
or you want to send out your open house announcement, but you want to have something of value on there, something that the homeowner comes to expect, comes to look forward to receiving from you. Maybe it's a coupon, right? Maybe it's an, an offer from a local vendor that you do business with. Um, you know, you, there's a lot of ideas there, and I'm sure you've done that kind of thing in the past, but within Market Advantage, because you have the ability to edit these pieces, you can do that quickly and easily too. So let's go back to, and we'll just go back to e-greetings, and we'll go to real estate cards, and just as an example, we'll create, and, and I'm sticking just with an email theme here, but let's do, like I'll grab this dream of your own home, we'll pull that into the editor, and we'll work on that idea for just a minute. So while that loads, we'll continue to look at this. And that was a quick one, so we loaded that all right. So place your greeting here. Uh, I'm going to actually move this text box. And we're just going to say, and in this, in this box, for, for my scenario, I'm envisioning my normal pitch. You know what I mean? My normal sales pitch here. And I'm just going to write that there just so we remember. I can, boy, I cannot type today. P-I-T-C. H. It's that G that I threw on there. Okay, so my normal pitch goes here. And again, I, I can make this as big as I want it to be. So, you know, again, Bonnie Bray expert uh, um, would love to help, you know, with your, fulfill your dreams, whatever you want to put there, right? That's the messaging in this card. If I don't like that, I'll pick something different. But again, I've got that there. I've got this here. And now maybe I want to add something of value, right? Something something from my from my dry cleaner or from my other small business that I'm doing some co-branding with. And I'm just going to pop a coupon right in here. Uh, so I'm going to add a new image, add image. I'm going to drag that image over here. And then, and I thought, oh, I did. Okay, I uploaded a coupon earlier that I just grabbed off of Google, Google Images. So I'm going to insert this coupon that I already had. And you, you know, you'd get this coupon from your from your vendor. And I'm just going to bring that down. And by the way, this little print icon here is telling me that this image that I'm bringing in is lousy for print quality. All right? In fact, it's bad for email quality because it's hard to read right here. So you'll need to bring in something that's bigger um, than that. But for this example, I just wanted to pull it in so that you could, you could get the idea there, right? So this is from the Chinese Culture Shop. Uh, it's a $5 gift coupon that they can print your email, cut it out, and take it over to the Chinese import shop. So, again, you've probably all done this in one form or another. Um, you've got to be careful sometimes about, you know, how that transaction takes place between you and that other vendor. But there's certainly nothing wrong, at least not as far as I know legally here in Colorado, uh, with you offering something like this to your uh, potential uh, client base. So again, just another idea of how you and another small business owner, because that's what we are, right? We're small business owners too, can get together and do a little co-branded marketing and send things out. Now, it doesn't always have to be a coupon. It doesn't always have to be um, anything that's really uh, monetary value to the client, although we all know that gets people through the door. Is there value there between you and the client, excuse me, your small business uh, referral source? Absolutely. Uh, if nothing else, you've got some, some co-branded marketing dollars going there too. So you've got to kind of watch that stuff as well uh, legally. But uh, that's how you could go about creating something and sort of co-branding and, and building a piece uh, that way as well. So kind of a cool idea. Um, it's a good way to uh, build business, build goodwill with those small businesses because I guarantee you, and let's just pretend that's a dry cleaning coupon, you send a few of those out and a few of those people come through the door for that dry cleaner with that coupon and hopefully it's a, it's a unique idea that you and, and the dry cleaner came up with and he knows where that's coming from. He's getting some business from you. I'm hoping that you're going to get some business back from him. So it's kind of back to, you know, school and business 101. Uh, with your with your with your marketing and I, and I know this is kind of a remedial lesson but I think sometimes we know about that stuff and a lot of times in fact I know in my personal case I take it for granted that people know what I do for a living even if you know I, I don't know I just assume that people know that I'm a realtor and this is back when I was selling that's a mistake you got to remind people you got to tell people even the people that you are sure 
know that that's what you do for a living and would, and would never refer to someone else before you, keep yourself top of mind with folks. And uh, I think Market Advantage has the tools in there to make this easy. So, all right. All right, I'm going to move away from that. We're not going to save that piece. Uh, and we will click on the right buttons and we can get out of there. So, again, just ideas. And remember this, too, that uh, whether you add your contacts here or you add them in the business center, uh, they're going to end up in Market Advantage. So if you're adding new leads in the business center and you're using the business center database as your uh, master database, that database always wins. And it will sync with Market Advantage. And if I added um, Sally Brown, my orthodontist, to the Business Center, next time I log into Market Advantage, Sally Brown will be in that list. So then I could go and find her and add her to that campaign at that time. So it's, it's a good way uh, to look at that as well. So regardless, and I hope you take something away from that, that, that there's some idea sparked there. Now, you know, a certain percentage of you will say, Ah, uh, John, you're crazy. That's not going to work for me here. Um, and that may be the case. You know your market much better than I do. But take something away from this, and I hope there's something of value there that, that you can say, aha, well, maybe not for exactly what John said, but I can use this for um, something else. So think about it that way. Um, and then, again, those business-to-business -business campaigns can really make your life easier once they're built that first time. Now, we built a very simple one. Uh, even in our pretend state, you know, it was five or six pieces, and it was designed for our small business contacts just to kind of say, hey, you know what, I, I live on referrals, so do you, let's see if we can't get our heads together and figure something out. You can get very specific and, and go to your home stagers and your, uh, oh gosh, carpet cleaning people and painters and roofers and those kind of things and start start building specific campaigns along those trade referrals and those kind of things as well. So once you've got them built, they'll stay there forever. So I can always go back to this campaign. Let me click on campaigns again. I can always go back to this campaign called small business referral and keep adding people to it or even duplicate it, right? And just give it a new name and start again with it. So it's real easy to do that. Uh, it, it created a new one down here so I could rename it and those kind of things. But once it's built once, you've saved it, you've built those pieces, you've brought them together as a campaign, you can edit them and, and, and make them uh, work for what you're trying to get accomplished uh, that particular particular week. So that's kind of a cool thing. Okay, so again, this stuff's fun for me. I hope that part was fun for you. Um, the, the, the last part that we're going to work on here today is again part of the upgrade that's available for Market Advantage, and that would be the, uh, the uh, web post portion of it, and how you can web post uh, these these lead generating things, even these campaigns, to your website. So let's go back to our small business referral campaign, and this time let's post it online. Now again, remember this is not available in just the the standard format. It's in the it's it's available to you in the upgraded version of Market Advantage, which which allows you to do a couple of things. It allows you to do this uh, web posting feature. It allows you to change like the order of your campaigns and create these custom campaigns and, and whatnot. So um, again, all we want to do is post this on our website so that people can click on a button and become part of this small business campaign. So if you can sort of imagine again with me, let's pretend we're on your web page and you're in the editor and you, you might type something above this button here that says, own a small business, question mark. Let's see if we can work together. And then you'll want them to click on this button, right? They click on the button. They are allowed to enroll here. They all you gotta do is put in a name and an email address and they hit submit and it drops them right into that small business referral campaign that you and I built together. So tomorrow, if John Brown, you know what, let's go ahead and do this. John Brown this time. And let, you know, let's say he's a plumber you've worked with, but he, he was at your website and he saw this. Uh, and again, I'm gonna use my email address. John Brown puts in his name. At a minimum, 
his name and email address and he hits submit. First he says it's okay to get stuff from you. Then he hits submit. He gets a message right away that says he's been successfully signed up. This is a message from you uh, that says, if you have any questions, please call me. And it would have your email address, your phone number there. Tomorrow now, John Brown is going to get piece one that we built together of that small business campaign. And remember, every piece that he gets is branded for you. It's got the ideas that you've put in there for the co-branded marketing. So it's a really cool way to sort of spread the word about these campaigns, even to people that you may not even know yet. These are just people, small business owners that may be on, you know, visiting your website. Um, they're going to get the benefit of being enrolled in that campaign. Now, if they, you know, if they, if they sign up for it and tomorrow they get this thing and they're like, referrals, I don't have, I don't, I don't even have a small business, you know, big deal. It, it's no harm, no foul. They got one email from you. If they decide they don't want it anymore, they unsubscribe, they're successfully removed. You get an email that says they've been re removed. They won't accidentally get anything from you again. No harm, no foul. So it's a great way to sort of expand, not just this campaign, but remember you can do this campaign uh, web post for any of the campaigns uh, that are available to you if you have that functionality in your Market Advantage account. So I think it's a really cool way uh, to take a look at that and uh, just, just, you know, to, to sort of get more exposure to what you're trying to accomplish. You've already got somebody to your website, or maybe you've posted this button on Craigslist. You know, you've gotten them to your ad on Craigslist. Let's try to get them in a drip out uh, campaign fashion uh, engagement from you. So uh, very cool that way. I think that's it's a good way to go. And yeah, I think it's pretty good phrase, um, personally, just, just on its own. But uh, that, that, that it's a cool thing to have. OK. Let's see if we have any questions to this point, because I think there was a couple that came in, and I don't want to move too far away from them without answering them. Um, oh, someone, someone's asking about, okay, the question is, when I have a new contact, I thought we should add them to the business center instead of market advantage. That is absolutely correct, and, and I, didn't, I didn't make that very clear. The business center contact management portion will always win. So if you are using that, if you are utilizing that, it will sync with Market Advantage when you log in, and it will always win. So in other words, anybody you put in the Business Center will then come into Market Advantage. It does not work the other way around, however, and that's good. You don't want them to be true syncs. If you put someone in Market Advantage singly, it will not send that person to your database at the Business Center. So if you're using the Business Center, I'll just say this one more time. If you're using the Business Center data, uh, fields, use those as your primary, and those will shift over automatically for you into Market Advantage. Now, in my scenario earlier, remember, you will need then to go find Ms. Brown, the orthodontist, and add her to that campaign that you want her added to. But great question, and actually it's a good catch on that because uh, it, it's important to know that uh, and you're not wasting effort uh, going back and forth between the, the two databases. So thank you very much for that. Okay, uh, I'm going to see if we have any more questions. I'm not seeing any. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a short lesson today. I hope it rings home with, it, with you. I appreciate your time on that. I hope it sparks some interest. Uh, it's been fun for me doing these for the, for the past five weeks. This is one of my favorite sessions because uh, it gets us the juices going a little bit about, about different ideas. And um, again, set up a few of these campaigns for business-to-business for -business referrals. Once they're built, they're ready to go. Um, for anybody that you might want to put into them uh, on the moving forward. So take a look at that. Um, if you haven't already, and I'm sure you have, but go start your Market Advantage account, get in there, and, and take advantage of all these things that, that we've had. So I will end today. I'm not seeing any more questions. And uh, just thank you again for, for sticking with me for, for these five weeks. And I hope you've learned a lot and, and got some good access to uh, ideas for Market Advantage. So thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. All right.